In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a critical piece of functionality needed for any decentralized exchange, how to swap tokens. In particular, I'm going to focus on the pricing mechanism that you can use to determine the ratio at which tokens should be swapped. The inspiration for this video comes from this guide to making a minimum viable decentralized exchange by Austin Griffith. In this amazing guide, which you should definitely follow to create your own decentralized exchange, Austin brings in this price function. The price function comes from this Uniswap Solidity GitHub repository. The GitHub repo is basically a Solidity implementation of Uniswap contracts. In the uniswap exchange.so file, we see the full documentation for this method. It's a pricing function for converting between ETH and tokens. Basically, let's say you have two token types, A and B. This pricing function will tell you how many B tokens to return when your user wants to swap A tokens for B tokens. Before proceeding further, let's review some backgrounds about centralized and decentralized exchanges. Many centralized exchanges for crypto work in a very similar manner to a stock exchange using an order book mechanism. Buyers can put in orders saying that they want to buy tokens at certain prices. Sellers can put in sell orders saying that they wish to sell tokens at certain prices. The exchange acts as a middleman and tries its best to match the sell orders and the buy orders as closely as possible so that both parties are happy. Implementing this order book mechanism on smart contracts is quite difficult. There can be a large number of outstanding buy and sell orders at any time, and storing every single one of those orders on the blockchain can be very expensive. People have proposed workarounds to this, for example by storing data offline or off the chain. However, that can be very complicated and insecure. In addition, there are many different types of orders, for example buy orders or limit orders. This can also make the smart contract code very complicated. Many decentralized exchanges, such as Uniswap, do not use order books for precisely those reasons. Liquidity providers first deposit their funds into a liquidity pool. The DEX then has rules for deciding how these assets can be swapped. For example, this is a screenshot from Uniswap for swapping USDC tokens for DAI tokens. The mechanisms used by DEXs to enable trading are called automated market makers. These mechanisms are automated because the logic is all written in smart contracts. Examples include bonding curves, which are used by Bancor, and constant product, which is used by Uniswap. The focus of this video is going to be on constant product. Constant product market makers rely on this equation, x times y equals k. x and y represent the supplies of the two tokens that are being traded against one another. For example, let's say you want to swap token A for token B, or you want to swap token B for token A. X can represent the supply of token A in the DEX. Y can represent the total supply of token B in the DEX. K is a constant number, which is the product of the two supplies multiplied together. The equation states that the total supply of token A multiplied by the total supply of token B must always be equal to this constant product, K. So what happens when you're swapping token A for token B? you're going to give some of your token A into the exchange. Therefore, the total supply of token A in the exchange is going to increase by the amount that you're giving it, which let's call that input A. Because you're giving your token A to the DEX, the DEX is going to give you token B in return. Therefore, the total supply of token B is going to decrease by the amount that the DEX is going to give you in return. We can let output B represent the number of tokens of token B that you're being given in exchange. When the swap is over, the new total supply of token A multiplied by the new total supply of token B has to multiply to that same product, K. Let's look at this with a more concrete example. Let's say the DEX has 10 tokens of token A and 10 tokens of token B. Therefore, the product is 10 by 10, which is equal to 100. Now, let's say you want to trade one token A and get token B in exchange. This means you're going to give the DEX one token A and the total supply of token B in the DEX is going to decrease because you're going to get some token B in return. But how much of token B are you going to get in return? Are you going to get exactly one token B back? Will it be an equal exchange? We can use multiplication to figure this out. At the end of the transaction, we know that we are going to have 11 tokens of token A in the exchange. We also know that the product has to be constant, so the product is still going to be 100. That means the total supply of token A, 11, multiplied by the new supply of token B has to equal 100. If we divide 100 by 11, we see that the final supply of token B is 9.09. .09. This means that at the end of the swap, there are going to be 11 tokens of token A, and there are going to be 9.09 .09 tokens of token B. If the original supply of token B is 10, and the final supply of token B is 9.09, .09, .09, that means that the DEX is going to give you 0.91 tokens of token B in exchange. 
To summarize, the DEX is going to start with 10 tokens of token A and 10 tokens of token B. A user is going to trade one token of token A for 0.91 tokens of token B. At the end of the swap, the DEX is going to have 11 tokens of token A and 9.09 .09 tokens of token B. You might think that this is not really a fair exchange because you're giving one token of token A but you're getting only 0.91 tokens of token B in exchange. However, this is how the constant product is intended to work. As the balances of two tokens becomes unequal, the token that has a greater supply is going to be worth less. For example, if everyone prefers token B over token A, that means that A should be worth less than token B. As more and more people try and buy token B, the supply of token B in the DEX is going to continue to decrease. Therefore, the next person that wants to buy token B has to pay more for it by paying more of token A. There are many other sources online where you can read about constant product markets in more technical terms. As I mentioned earlier, after each transaction, the reserves are updated in the following way. The supply of one token type is going to decrease, and the supply of the other token type is going to increase. The constant K is going to be the product of these new supplies. This is where the name constant product comes from. The product K is always constant and it's always going to be the same. However, that only holds if there are no transaction fees. Real DEXs do have transaction fees. By collecting transaction fees, they can reward users for providing liquidity. Without transaction fees, there is no incentive for users to provide liquidity into the DEX. Let's look at an example of how the pricing mechanism works with transaction fees. For most DEXs, the transaction fee is pretty small, for example, 0.3%. However, to make things easier to understand, let's use a transaction fee of 10%. This means that every time you do a swap on the DEX, 10% of the tokens that you pass in are going to be kept by the DEX and you won't get them back. Let's see how our previous example would work with a 10% transaction fee. We still have an initial supply of 10 tokens of token A and 10 tokens of token B. We are also still going to pass in one token of token A. However, we're not going to get back 0.91 tokens for token B. This is because the DEX is going to keep 10% of what we passed into the DEX. Therefore, we are only going to get back 0.819 tokens of token B. This means that the DEX is going to be keeping some additional tokens of token B as its transaction fee. Therefore, after the transaction is completed, the DEX is going to have a total supply of 11 tokens of token A, and it's going to have 9.181 tokens of token B, not 9.09. .09. Because of the transaction fee, the DEX is giving us fewer token Bs, which means the DEX gets to keep more token B for itself. When we multiply these two supplies together, we see that the product K is changing. Before the swap, the product was 100, but now it's 100.99. This means that the invariant product, K, is increasing at the end of every trade. When transaction fees are involved, it's not truly a constant. We can also verify this by reading the Uniswap documentation. Swapping fees are immediately deposited into liquidity reserves. Since fees are added to liquidity pools, the invariant increases at the end of every trade. Within a single transaction, the invariant represents the ratio of the token supplies at the end of the previous transaction only. Let's go back to our equation x times y equals k. Let's say we want to swap token x for token y. That means we're going to pass in token x and receive token y in exchange. This means that the supply of x in the DEX is going to increase by some amount, let's call that a, and the amount of y in the DEX is going to decrease by some amount, let's call that b. If we isolate for the variable b, b is the product of y and a divided by the sum of x and a. You are more than welcome to take a pen and paper and perform the calculations yourself to verify that this is true. Now let's use our new knowledge to break down this pricing mechanism in the Solidity file. This pricing mechanism takes in three arguments, input amount, input reserve, and output reserve. The input amount is the amount of tokens that you're passing in. The input reserve and the output reserve represent the total supplies that the DEX has of the two tokens that are being swapped. The input reserve is the supply of the tokens for the inputs that you're passing in. The output reserve is the supply of the token that you'll be getting in exchange. From our example, if you're swapping token A for token B, then input reserve would be the total supply of token A in the DEX. Output reserve would represent the total supply of token B in the DEX. Input amount would represent the number of token A's that you're passing in. Now, where do these numbers 997 and 1000 come from? In Uniswap, the transaction fee is 0.3%, which is equivalent to 997 over 1000. So basically, when you pass in some number of token A's into the DEX, the DEX is going to return you some number of token B. 
The number of token Bs that you get in return is going to be calculated using the constant product maker, and 0.3% of the token Bs will be kept by the DEX as a transaction fee. Personally, I found it really difficult to read this code in its original form, so I've converted it into a PowerPoint slide so that it's easier for me to explain. I've converted the previous code into pseudocode. The function is taking in three variables, the input amount, the input reserve, and the output reserve. I abbreviated input and output to in and out, and I abbreviated the word amount and reserve. From the previous code, the numerator is equal to the input amount multiplied by 997 multiplied by the output reserve. The denominator is equal to the input reserve multiplied by 1000 plus the product of the input amount and 997. The previous slide may have been a bit hard to read, so I also put it more simply on this slide. Input amount times 997 times output reserve over input reserve times 1000 plus input amount times 997. In the denominator, 997 and 1000 are pretty much equal. So we can pretty much factor out 1000 to the side. If you remember from our previous slide, we have X representing the input reserve and Y representing the output reserve. We have A representing the change in supply of X and B representing the change in supply of B. Lastly, we have B equal to this expression here. We can replace input amount by the variable A. We can replace output reserve by the variable Y. If we continue with the replacement, the equation is the same as this. Therefore, we see that the result is equal to B multiplied by 997 over 1000. Instead of getting back the full number of token Bs, we're receiving that number minus a 0.3% transaction fee. We first calculate the value of B using the constant product, and then we subtract the 0.3% transaction fee. I also found it easier to understand the Solidity code by rewriting it into a Python script and then playing around with different numbers for the input amounts, input reserves, and output reserves. I wrote two Python versions of that pricing mechanism. The first version uses a transaction fee of 0.3%. The second version uses no transaction fee. This means that the number of tokens that you get in return should be the exact value that's returned through the constant product. I won't go into the Python code in detail because it's simply a translation of the Solidity code into Python. However, I will include the code in a GitHub link in the video description. Lastly, I'm testing out different scenarios by seeing how the price changes depending on the reserves of the DEX and the amount that's being traded. In all scenarios, the input and output reserves are originally set to 1000. In the first case, I'm swapping one token of token A. In the second case, I'm swapping 500 tokens of token A. In the last case, I'm swapping 995 tokens of token A. When I execute the script, you'll see that as the number of tokens that are being inputted increases relative in size to the input and output reserves, the number of tokens that are returned by the DEX during the swap is going to decrease. And these are the results from running the script. When the input reserve and the output reserve are set to 1000 and I'm only trading in one token of token A, I'm going to get 0.996 tokens of token B left. That's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. With a 0.3% transaction fee, I'm getting 0.996 tokens back. Without the transaction fee, you would get back 0.999 tokens. Now let's see what happens when we want to trade 500 tokens of token A. 500 is a pretty large number compared to the input and output reserves of 1000. Therefore, this time we get back much fewer tokens of token B. With the 0.3% transaction fee, we're only getting back 332 and two thirds B tokens. Without the transaction fee, we're getting 333 and one third. Lastly, let's see what happens when we want to trade 995 tokens. Now the B tokens are getting much more expensive. In return, we only got back 497 B tokens. That's about half of the number of A tokens that we originally inputted during the swap. This makes sense because if many people want to swap token A for token B, this means that the B token is worth more than the token A. Therefore, each B token should cost more A tokens to buy. As the supply of token B gets really low, it will take more and more A tokens to buy the B tokens. For further details, I strongly recommend reading the Uniswap white paper and other research papers about decentralized exchanges. It's a really fascinating topic, and I plan on having more videos about decentralized exchanges in the future, so please subscribe if you want to see more content. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below, and I hope to see you in the next video.